Hello. So far, we've been looking at logic. We're now going to move up a level and think about numbers and arithmetic. To work with numbers on a computer, we need to find a way of representing them. And then having done that, we need to find a way of using logic to carry out arithmetic. And in particular, we're going to be looking at addition. So the first thing to think about is counting. So as humans, we count like this. We have 10 digits, 0 to 9. Because we have 10 digits, it's a base 10 system, or decimal. And with the, nine, with the 10 digits, we can count up to 9. If we want to count to more than 9, we add another column. So our first column on the right-hand side is our 1's column, and we add a 10's column. It's a 10's column because it's base 10. That will get us up to 99. If we wanted to count further than 99, we'd add a second column, and this would be a hundreds column. It's a hundred because it's 10 times 10. Now, there's nothing magic about base 10. Uh, in fact, humans have used other number bases in the past. Uh, we can use whatever number base we find most convenient. And in computers, we find that the most convenient is base 2. Um, so it's going to use a base 2 system, otherwise called binary. So it's base 2, so we have two digits, 0 and 1. And that lets us count up to 1. If we wanted to count further than 1, we'd need to add another column. This will be a 2's column. It's a 2's column because it's base 2. And that will let us count up to 3. If we want to count further than 3, we need to add another column. It's the second column we've added, so it'll be 2 times 2. So it's a 4's column. And that will let us count up to 7. If we want to count to more than 7, we add another column, we add a third column. So this will be a 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8, an 8's column. And that will let us count up to 15, and so on and so forth. So this is counting in binary. Now, a piece of terminology you may have heard of is the bit. This is normally used with reference to the size of a processor or something like that. And a bit is a binary digit. It's the amount of size or space or whatever you need to store a binary digit, which could take the value of either 0 or 1. Now, if you have a set of bits, then you have a set of binary digits. And that could give you a representation of a binary number. So if you had four bits, for example, that would let you represent any binary number up to four columns wide. So it would let you represent any number from 0 to 15. And that's what we do in computers. We store numbers as a, bi as a set of bits representing, representing a binary number. So this gives us a representation of numbers. And now we need to start looking at how we're going to add them. I'm going to start by adding one-bit numbers. So adding two one-bit numbers, each number could take the value of either 0 or 1, so there are not many options, so we'll just go through them. So 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. Now we can't store 2, because we can only get, count up to 1 in binary, with a single bit. So we need to generate a carry, which will go into our next column, which will be our twos column, which leaves us zero in our ones column, and our one, which we're carrying into the next column. So this is adding one-bit numbers. We would like to use logic to do this for us. So far, when we've been looking at logic functions, we've been using little truth tables to define the function. And we'll do that here as well. So the first thing to do is to do this sum symbolically. So we're going to look at it as x plus y. And that will give us a sum in our ones column and a possible carry in the twos column. And now we can generate the tables for our sum function and our carry function. And they look like this. So if we start with a sum, we get a 1 
as an output for the sum, when either x or y are 1, but not both. And that's this table here. And this is the same table as we had for the exclusive OR function, which we looked at previously. So our sum function is an exclusive OR function, as the same thing. If we now look at the carry, we only get a carry out when both x and y are 1. And that's this table here. And this is the same table as the AND function. So the carry function is the same as the AND function. So we can do this kind of one bit addition if we have a combination of an AND function and an exclusive OR function. And that looks like this. So we have x plus y gives someone carry. Uh, so let's go through the set of options. We have 0 plus 0 gives us a sum of 0 and a carry of 0. A 1 plus a 0 gives us a sum of 1 and a carry of 0. And 0 plus 1 again gives us a sum of 1 and a carry of 0. And a sum of 1, adding 1 plus 1 gives us a sum of 0 and a carry of 1. And this kind of combination of an exclusive OR and an AND is referred to as a half adder. So that's the one bit number. So now let's look at adding bigger numbers. We're going to look at adding two three bit numbers together. So we'll do this one first. A 0 plus 0 is 0. 1 plus 0 is 1. And 0 plus 1 is 1. So let's interpret what we've done. 1, 0 is a binary representation of 2. And 1, 0, 0 is a binary re representation of 4. So adding 2 plus 4, the answer is 6. And that has a binary representation of 1, 1, 0, which is what we got. So now let's do this sum here. 1 plus 1 gives us a sum of 0 and a carry. 1 plus 1 gives us a sum of 0 and a carry. So we'll put the carry in here. So we had a sum of 0, but we've got to add in the carry. So 0 plus 1 for the carry is 1. Now do this column. 0 plus 1 is 1. We've now got to add in the carry. So it's 1 plus 1 gives us a sum of 0 and a carry of 1. And 0 plus 0 is the sum of 0. Well, we now have to add the carry of 1 to that. So that gives us a 1. So the result is 1, 0, 1, 0. So if we try and interpret this, we have 1, 1, which is 3, and 1, 1, 1, which is 7. So we're adding 3 and 7, which is 10. And that has a binary representation of 1, 0, 1, 0, which is what we had. Now this sum was a bit more tricky than this one, because we were generating carries. But we had a process for dealing with that. We first of all added the numbers above the line as a one-bit addition. And that gave us a possible carry and a sum. And we then added the sum that had been generated with any carry that had been generated previously to give us the actual sum we used and perhaps another carry. So you can imagine, we can do that um, process using two of these half adders. And that looks like this. So this half adder here is adding the two numbers above the line and generating a possible carry and a first attempt at a sum. And then this half adder takes that first attempt at a sum and adds in any carries that were generated by the previous column and that gives us our actual sum. And then the two possible carries are ordered together to give us 
I carry, which will go to the next column. So let's do the sums again, but this time we'll let the logic do the work for us. So here we have 0 plus 0, 0 plus 0. There's no carry because there's no previous stage. So that gives us a sum of 0 and a carry of 0. We have 1 plus 0 and no carry. So 1, 0, no carry. And that gives us a sum of 1 and a carry of 0. We now have 0 plus 1 and no carry. 0, 1, no carry. And that gives us a sum of 1 and a carry of 0. And that's the same as we had last time. So this logic is performing as we want. So now let's do this uh, sum which we found a bit, a bit more tricky last time. So it's 1 plus 1. There's no carry. So 1 plus 1, no carry, gives us a sum of 0 and a carry of 1. We're now going to do 1 plus 1 and a carry. So 1, 1, and a carry. That gives us a sum of 1 and a carry of 1. We now want to do 0 plus 1 and a carry. So 0, 1, and a carry. And that gives us a sum of 0 and a carry of 1. So now we need to finish off. So it's 0 plus 0 and a carry. So 0, 0, and a carry. And that gives us a sum of 1 and a carry of 0. So we've generated the result 1, 0, 1, 0, which is what we had last time. So these two half adders together um, make a full adder. And we can use this to add together um, bits. And if we wanted to do the whole sum in one go, we would just replicate this logic as many times as we needed for the size of the numbers that we're adding together. So that's it, we've used logic to do addition. There's lots of other arithmetic operations we could look at, subtraction, multiplication, and they're all quite interesting and have their own charms. But we don't really need to look at them to carry on in our journey of trying to understand how a processor works. So we're not gonna look at any more arithmetic. Uh, we just need to know that we can, we know how to add them if we need to. And we now know that we can represent numbers as a set of bits. So the next thing we need to look at is time.